Good morning everyone. I hope you all are fine and good in your health. So see, we were studying this particular chapter, Habitation and Adaptation, chapter number 5 from Connect with Science Biology, right, of class 6. So today we will be continuing with the rest part of the chapter. And before that, just uh, I hope that you do not have any query. Some of you have contacted me and I hope that I was able to resolve all the queries. So we have already learned about what are the habitats. Today we will be starting from desert habitats. See, deserts are dry region receiving very little rainfall. Now we all know what are the desert in our country. We have Rajasthan, Thar. Okay, these are the desert that we commonly know. Now, desert are dry region receiving very little rainfall. They may be hot or cold, sandy or rocky. Desert have sparse vegetation as soil lacks water. Dust storm and soil erosion are common features. There is a marked difference between the day and night temperature and the night are colder than the days. Example, the thaw desert. Okay. Now, what happens? See, the, the fluctuation of temperature. Okay. In desert, during uh, your daytime or during the afternoon, you will find the temperature is very, very, very high. Okay. Now, in the night, it is very cold and chilly. So, if this is the temperature fluctuation in a single day, then it is very uh, much impossible for the crops or for the vegetation or plants to survive. Now, there are several habitats as well as the adaptation that this particular plants and animals make for them to survive. Okay, see. Adaptation in desert plants. Desert plants show different type of adaptation. Some desert plants are adapted to conserve water and storing it in their succulent or fleshy body parts. Example, cactus, eucus and agave. Some desert serves have adapted by growing deep roots that reach the underground water. Some plants such as the desert lily remains dormant during the dry season and grow rapidly when water is available. Tumbleweeds break off from the main part and get blown by desert wind. They roll along the flat desert surface to reach far off places and in the process spread their seeds. Okay. Adaptation in cacti. Leaves of cacti, singular is known as cactus, okay, and the plural is cacti, are modified into pines. They conserve water by preventing the water loss through transpiration. The stem of cacti are green, thick, and fleshy. The green stem helps through photosynthesis. The fleshy stem stores water to make up the low rainfall. Cacti also have a waxy coating to prevent the loss of water. Adaptation in desert animal. Desert animals such as rattlesnake and kangaroo rat remain in the burrow during the day to escape the heat. They come out only in the evening when it is cool to look for the prey. Now that is how they adapt to the temperature zone. Okay. The lizard called thorny devil has well designed scales on his body which collect dew drops and transport them to its mouth. <coughs> the jackrabbit and fence fox have large ears. The body vessels, the blood vessels in the in their ear allow them to release excess heat from the body. Meerkats make burrow under the ground. They get water from the food they eat. They also eat the roots of plants to get water. Adaptation in camel. Now we all know what is camel. Or how does the camel look? We all know that camel have a specialized part where they store the water, right? See, a camel has two rows of eyelashes which protect its eye from the blowing sand. Its nostrils are slit which can be closed to protect from the sand and the wind. It has flat disc-like feet to prevent from sinking in the sand. It can drink a large amount of water in one go. The hump of a camel acts as a fat or food reserve. Clear? Now we are coming to mountain habitat. Mountains are rocky and high altitude areas. They are generally cold and windy. Snowfall may occur in the high region of mountains. 
coniferous or cone bearing okay we call it as cone bearing trees such as pine fir spruce and deodor and animals such as snow leopard brown bear and a mountain goat are found in the mountain habitat adaptation in mountain plants so what are the adaptation see pine and fir most trees that grow in mountain areas are cone shaped and have slope branches these features allow snow or rainfall to slide off easily pine and fir trees have needle shaped leaves with thick waxy coating called cuticle to prevent loss of water through transpiration pine needles have sunken stomata to reduce water loss dark green needles maximize the absorption of sunlight and allow the plant to photosynthesize the seed of pine trees are enclosed in woody cones which protect the seed against the harsh winters most coniferous trees are evergreen trees which means they do not shed all their leaves at once and therefore can photosynthesize throughout the particular year clear now see adaptation in mountain animals now these what i have discussed is about the mountain plants now coming to mountain animals mountain goat mountain goat have a strong and flexible hooves that spread wide and help to swiftly climb up the steep rocks they have soft rubbery pads under their sole which provide a good grip while jumping from one rock to the another the horns help to protect against the predator the fur helps to keep their body warm now add some other adaptation see the first one is aerial adaptation in birds they have wings feathers legs and a tail the following features help them help the bird to fly now this is the uh, structure of a bird look at this this figure is important may be like diagram may come okay see the forelimb of the birds are modified as wings birds have a light and hollow bones this makes their body lightweight and enables them to fly so their bones are hollow in nature our bones are not hollow okay they are solid birds have strong shoulder bones and modified breast bone to hold the strong flight muscles which enables the wings to move upward or the upstroke and downward or the downstroke birds have streamlined bodies this help them to move swiftly and offer least resistance to the air same as the fish now if you have seen a bird definitely you have seen it you will see their bodies are also like this adaptation in special plants there are several special plants where adaptation also occurs see aerial plants are those plants that develop their roots above the ground examples are epiphytes and pneumatophores pneumato okay now epiphytes these are plants that grow on the other other plants for physical support and better access to sunlight without harming the host plant these are also called air plants okay so these grow on another plant okay now whenever a particular organism is growing on another organism that organism is known as host okay so these type of epiphytes do not harm the host plant okay these are also called air plants they have hanging roots which absorb moisture directly from the air and carry out photosynthesis without depending on the host plant for nutrient orchids are some common epiphytes now pneumatophores these plants have uh, uh, plants such as black mangroves are adapted to survive in the swampy soil they are waterlogged and have low oxygen level they have specialized aerial roots or breathing roots called pneumatophores okay now see as the plants are growing in a dumpy uh, or in a uh, say waterlogged area so how will their roots be able to take in the minerals and the oxygen so they have particular structure or adapted features of roots which are upward in upward direction okay and this is known as <coughs> pneumatophores these roots have several pores that take up oxygen from the air and allow the plant to respire now next one is assimilatory roots these are slender aerial hanging roots of plant like uh, tinospora which develop chlorophyll and turn green in color they are modified to prepare food for the plant by photosynthesis so have you ever heard that a root is making photosynthesis no 
we generally know that leaves are making photosynthesis or undergoing photosynthesis process but see in this case assimilatory roots their particular roots uh, contains chlorophyll and they are green in color which helps in photosynthesis clear and the last one is hostorial roots some parasitic plants such as uh, cuscuta <coughs> have specialized root that penetrate into the host plant to derive water and nutrient okay now this particular in your chapter only this chapter is new and the rest two chapters uh, you have already got the syllabus those are revision chapter so i guess this chapter is uh, clear to you all as i always tell you if you have any problem then definitely ask me i will definitely try to get back to you as soon as possible clear so study well study hard take care of yourself take care of your family as we all know that this uh, new strain of omicron virus or uh, new modified form of coronavirus is at the its peak so stay at home stay safe take care of your family take care of yourself we'll be meeting with new chapter in the next classes thank you